I truly believe that we have one of the most loyal fan base in this world. And I truly believe we do them right more than most in the world. Hi guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound with the latest in our series of video calls while everyone's stuck at home. And I'm delighted to say that from very tomorrow, Danny joins me down the line. How are you, mate? I'm all right, mate. Plodding on as we do, so. Yeah, that's the best attitude, man. We've got to just plod on, get on with it. That's kind of how I've been starting all of these so far is actually just checking how everyone is. Are you safe? You're well where you are? Well, yeah, so I work for the NHS, so I'm I'm pretty much on on absolute mobilisation mode at the moment. So, uh, yeah, so it's good. I'm, I'm doing my thing, doing my part. So, yeah, it's good. Yeah, absolutely, man. And yeah, I, I was going to say, you are in the most unique position of anyone we've spoken to so far, of course, because you work with the NHS. Um, yeah. I see already, I, you know, obviously watching on Twitter and stuff, and you're, you're doing what you can to help support your colleagues and everything as well. What's kind of morale like for you guys at the minute? How's it all going? Uh, it's really good, actually. You know, um, it's high pressure, no doubt about that. It's, it's pretty mad. But um, as far as, like... Uh, as far as they, they go, they're pretty, you know, they're very, very resilient human beings and they're used to being resilient human beings. They're kind of in like a psychological stage. They're in like a, this um, heroic stage at the moment. They're moving from like an anticipation phase, which is what we've classified as like their well-being. And then they've moved on to this kind of heroic stage where people are, you know, coming forward to do better and bigger and better things for their staff, all these kind of things. But you know, the, the next bit's the part that I really, I get concerned about, which is where people, you know, start to burn out, where they start to get a bit of stress. Um, so we're just making sure that we're looking after staff when it comes to their psychological well-being uh, moving forward. So it's all important stuff. It's, you know, there's some really high pressured areas. There's some really um, kind of business as usual areas, really. So, um, but everyone's getting ready. It feels like I don't know, the closest I've ever been to probably being in a wartime or something like that, um, as far as like, you know, people all at action stations, things could change in a day um, or an hour, really. They are changing minute by minute, really. So, so yeah, we're all ready. Um, we're not through the worst of it. We're not even in the worst of it yet. So um, we're just making sure that we're ready for that. Yeah, well, all the best to you and your colleagues, man. It's it's, a, it's an incredible time, unlike anything, obviously, we've seen in our lifetimes. Um, I guess from just an outsider's point of view, uh, before we get onto music and stuff, uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, you've been really, really great on social media and kind of being able to give out advice you hear from colleagues and, and being able to sort of show examples of, of people helping out your colleagues and helping out people in the NHS. Just as someone outside the system, what can we be doing more to assist with people actually on the front lines apart from following the government guidelines is there anything else we can do you know yeah i mean i would say just stay at home <laughs> yeah <laughs> fair it. enough important very important that is the biggest the biggest thing man like i drove home from southampton today and i saw people you know it's really you know i i get annoyed because i work for the nhs and i get annoyed because i understand it probably i have a bit of knowledge in that sense but you know it's this isn't a holiday period for people you know like as as crap as it is to and as such a kick in the teeth as mother nature is in that it's given us three weeks of glorious weather so far like you know it, it it's not a holiday you know and this is something that people need to they need to have their their steps you know ready for themselves mentally they need to make sure that they are practicing what helps them feel better whether that's mindfulness or cbt work or you know, just connecting socially. It's not social distancing, it's physical distancing. Social distancing is, is not what we're trying to do here. Social distancing is is bad, you know, and we should actually be more socially interactive than we've ever been, but from a digital perspective. So people just need to be connecting with people because, I, you know, I don't want to see a surge of people ended up being in crisis from mental health um, stuff. Um, you know, being careful at home, that would be great. Um, sure. Thank you. A career of juggling knives when you're sat in uh, social isolation or not social, set physical distance thing. Um, and then generally, you know, like if people, you know, just keep an eye on your local services, you know, like if people need help or they're putting calls out for people, you know, obviously a lot of people are off on the 80% government thing, which I think is a great thing. I think it gives people a bit of time to breathe and time to think and relax and just look after themselves really. Um, but really, you know, following that guideline is the most most important thing you know it, it is proven in these places of absolute pandemic where things have got absolutely insane is that actually 
social distancing for longer periods of time or not social physical distancing for longer periods of time have better outcomes when it comes to spikes it's not about reducing the the, the curve so much anymore because i think the curve's going to get to its peak i think it's more about actually when we're coming back out of that it doesn't go up again which it will do if we don't kind of think about it sensibly um but yeah just follow your local trust on twitter follow you know talk about it be positive don't share things that are a load of rubbish. You know, go on public health websites, um, find reputable links. Don't just follow something that is a Twitter because, you know, use social media for what social media is supposed to be for and that's socially interacting with your friends. You yeah, know, yeah. I, I think, I think you're, you're very wise in saying about social media in particular. You know, everyone's looking at their screens constantly now because we're all stuck in the house. <laughs> Maybe let's get back to a more innocent usage and, uh, and use it to connect with mates and stuff a little bit more. I think that's very, very yeah, sensitive. No doubt, no doubt. Let's get into music now, shall we? Because there's nice things to look forward to in this crazy, crazy time. We do have a new album coming from Very Tomorrow. Slightly pushed back, very, very understandably, but still a very, very exciting time. Talk me through, in, in, in as concise a way as you can, let's start <laughs> the themes of Cannibal, because it's, it sounds like a very important thing for you guys. Yeah, it's it's weird actually. This is, seems like such an odd conversation after like we were gearing up so hard and like I was having conversations like this pretty much, you know, daily for like four, five, six weeks prior to the album and then obviously with the pushback it's kind of weird to have almost like a about a week lull almost of like, Oh, I'm I'm NHS mobilized now and off I go. Like it just seems a bit odd now to go back and, and think about cannibal. Um yeah, so like it kind of all ties in with what I'm doing with resilience and well-being as well. And it's it's really a journey that I went on a couple of years ago um, where I had massively depreciated mental health and I suffered quite heavily with um, what well, continues to do so and I'll never get rid of um, my anxiety and, and uh, depression. And actually, you know, for me, it was a journey of like Cannibal was a perfect timing and a perfect combination of timing plus kind of fan base and we're at this stage this really pivotal moment with our fan base where we've got black flame was really an album for the fans it was an album for people to go you know yes we're a solidified group of people that we do everything we possibly can in this world for fans and we gave them an album that was for them which was black flame um which is predominantly probably the first time we've done an album kind of all like that. We did Lionheart, which was a song that was written about fans bringing us back from the brink. But this was the kind of culmination of all of these years. You know, Black Flame was our like swan song for that kind of era of like, you know, amazing, thank you so much, thank you so much. And then it was a really moment for, for me to kind of think, well, a, a perfect storm of being well enough to be able to talk about mental health, which is really important. I had to get my resilience up where I could actively talk about it without it having a negative impact on, on me. Um, I wanted to learn everything I possibly could about mental health um, without being a clinical practitioner because I think it's important, you know, as much as I want and I probably will go through my kind of CBT mindfulness and, um, and kind of practitioner level stuff, which I'm sure I will do at some point. I really wanted it to come from a lived experience kind of point of view. Um, and sometimes, not all the time, sometimes kind of having a bit of knowledge and um, can, well, having clinical knowledge can sometimes cloud that, I think, with, with this is what's happening, this is what's happening. I wanted to tell the story of how it felt. Um, so, and then being in a position where actually our fans are willing and able to accept that on, on a level where I'm not trying to say, you know, the metalcore olds of we're going to rise up and we're going to rise together and all the old kind of cliches that you get from metalcore really as a genre. Um, I kind of had a position where I could be honest and and I knew it was going to be accepted. You know, we could, I could release an album where I'm talking really honestly about mental health and being vulnerable without feeling like, and I probably could have done it 10 years ago with our amazing fan base 10 years ago, but I felt at that time that, you know, we've given, I've gone through all of these albums. I've done, you know, we're on six albums now. Like it's a lot of albums spanning, you know, 14 years worth of work and effort and time um and you know i i felt like i had to be honest you know and i've also campaigned a lot over this last year um predominantly over this last year two years around mental health and safe space and all the stuff i did around there um, and then working for a mental health trust for two and a half years which i now have moved back to a um, big hospital but i worked there and it gave me a lot of insight in being honest and being vulnerable and you know cannibal was is the first 
time I've ever been so blatant and straight up about mental health and my depreciated mental health. Um, and it really is, you know, it's for people to connect with if they connect with it. It's for people to understand me a bit better at very base level, you know. So it's not saying that everyone's going to feel that way. It's not individual songs are about, this song's about anxiety, this song's about depression. It's just generally how you feel when you go through these emotions. So, so yeah, it's a, it's a good one. I'm proud of it. I'm immensely proud of, you know, myself being able to do that. And it is, you know, through the campaign. And as I said, it's a slightly odd and fractured campaign slightly at the moment, which is a bit, weird and odd to be going through but everyone's going through it so actually it gives me a little bit of solace to be able to say well yeah. it's it an odd it community weirdness we're all going through at the minute, <laughs> isn't it this is it everyone yeah. coming together and like you say you know with the with the themes on the album yes you are talking about very personal issues and and, and what you've gone through personally but they are universal feelings for a lot of people and it does kind of make sense to to put it out there now that you know that the audience are there and, and you feel confident enough i suppose to to understand that they will be there to appreciate it i, I guess that is my my underlying question you know like you say you you've this many albums deep what what brought about that confidence to finally be able to say actually yeah now is the time this is the one where i'm gonna speak a bit more from the heart well, I think for me, like, I'm also a late to the game, like mental health, depreciated mental health. Like I've had depreciated mental health probably my whole life. Or, and certainly I suffered with anorexia when I was younger. And, you know, and, and there's certain when you when you get diagnosis, which is what I did um, or diagnosed, I you can go back then with rose tinted tint spectacles and kind of be like, well, that's where that was anxiety or that was depression or that was me having a panic attack or. You can go back and do that, but and you can also then do the psychoanalytic and analytical point where you kind of go, oh, well, that's probably a contributing factor to it. That's my trigger points. All of those kind of things is is like it's easy, but you know, for me, when I got, got diagnosed, I only got diagnosed when I was like twenty six, twenty seven. So actually, you know, I'm quite late to the game when it comes to actually like reaching out for help, which is which is part of it. Really important um, to identify that. Um, identify what stopped me or what identified what contributed to it or what I could have done better um, in myself, which is something I'm always important. Uh, it's important for everyone to do. Um, but I think as well, you know, we knew with Black Flame, we wanted to do something very different and we wanted to do something that solidified and really, you know, put our hearts on our sleeve when it came to showing the fans exactly what they meant to us. Like, you know, we did Black Flame Band, and the whole campaign was focused around how can we digitally and physically connect with our fans on a different level, which is what we did and we achieved. You know, I, I truly believe that. I think it was a wholly successful campaign. Um, and then from that point of view, it just gives you a catalyst of almost being like, well, what next then? You know, and, and from that aspect, I just started, it was quite an organic process. I'd already started writing lyrics and they all seemed to just sit within that vein. Um, and then I, I remember having a vivid conversation when we were in the studio and the guys being like, well, Dan, like six out of the 11 songs are right now. Uh, and I'd only written six out of the 11. They're all pointing towards your met depreciated mental health or how you felt. They were like, well, if we're going to do this, you know, we're not going to force other songs to be different just for the sake of it, you know, or just be on a different topic or genre in that, in that sense. So it was kind of like a conscious well, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it properly. Um, and we're going to go whole in about this from a personal level. And, and yeah, so that was the kind of moment really, but it was quite an organic process as far as, and it was probably because we'd almost capped off those five albums with Black Flame. And we'd kind of been like, you know, there you go. There's your, you know, quintet of albums all together, which show a progression from start, from Boys Done Good 2009, all the way up to, you know, um, 2015 or 2016. No, 2018. Yeah, 2018 with Black Flame. It wasn't that um, long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that long ago. But it was that, like, combination of, like, there you go. There's your back catalogue. And then this one was like, a, okay, now we're getting into the nuts and bolts of me as a human being. For me, how can I tell people to be honest about their mental health if I'm not being honest about my mental health? That just seems wholly hypocritical to me. So... Um, and I'm all for living by the sword. And if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it properly. And, and yeah, this has ended up being one of those things, I think. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. And you alluded to it there. What a successful time and campaign Black Flame was. I mean, it, yeah. it really was unbelievable how you guys 
built that community that was always there, but really, like you say, connected with them on an even bigger level. It was, it was an incredible, incredible project. Now that there is a little bit of time gone by, what are your kind of takeaways from that campaign as a whole? Like, what are the highlights of the Black Flame era for you? Um, I think, you know, doing Black Flame Band was serious. You know, that was like a, one of those moments where you go like, can we make this work? And we made it work and it was sweet, you know, and it wasn't all weird. And, you know, we got fans from all around the world to submit videos and we gave them an opportunity where we paid for them to come to London, spend two days with us, gave them instruments and a great time and, you know, and, and watched them play our song together. Like that was just one of those life affirming moments where, you know, I'm talking a handful of bands have ever done anything like that in the history of music. You know, and that is like, what an accolade to have on our name, that, you know. And it's re wholly appropriate that we did that because I truly believe that we have one of the most loyal fan base in this world. And I truly believe we do them right more than most in the world, you know. And we will never ever bane or flex on our, the, um, how much they mean to us, you know, and, and what we do for them. Um, could we do more? Probably. Are we probably going to do more? Probably. Like, it's like, you know, that's what we're about. And I love our fans. And, and I think that is the success. The success, yeah. it's solidified as a, a worldwide metalcore name. It's solidified as one of the biggest bands in the UK for this kind of music. If, you know, and this specific kind of music, if not the, like, you know. Yeah, 100%. No, no, no. You've got bands like Architects, which are doing their thing, very different to us. You know, it's got the same melody. You've got bands like Sleeps, very, again, in the punk's vein. But then when you start talking about who comes next, you're talking about us. And, you know, and then we took the European market by storm and we took, we're now bigger, playing probably collectively bigger venues in Germany than we're playing in the UK, which is bonkers, man. We went from playing 300, 400 caps on the same album cycle to at the end of the album cycle playing 1500 caps. Like, you know, so... It's been wholly successful. It was great. It was the first record on Sony, so it's a real teething kind of seeing what we can do right on this record that we may didn't, maybe didn't do amazing on the last record on Black Flame. So Cannibal is that kind of like, all right, okay, we know what resources we have, we know what we need to do, and we can do this from a personal level as well, which is just something I've never, ever felt the feeling that I have when I play Cannibal and especially the grey on the last tour. It just connects with people on a wholly different level, um, which we've never had. We never have had that. Yeah, um, it's, which, it's amazing. Like you say, the numbers don't lie as well. Like, the, like the, the increase in room size and everything, you just saw people flock to you guys as that yeah, project just yeah. worked more and more. It really did click so well. And I guess you alluded to it there again, but... What is next? Like, like, have you thought about ways to, around this new campaign, obviously it's a very different record and it's very, from a personal perspective, but will there be more of that kind of building of the fan community, more event style stuff, more of, more of what we saw last time around? Yeah, I think we're already getting that. I suppose on an organic level, if you're a growing band and like, it's weird to say that, you know, 14 years later that we're still a growing band and which again is another success that I will, you know, say is, partly to do with our tenacity and partly to do with our kind of drive and commitment to the cause. You know, we are not rich and nor, you know, I, I work for the NHS. I don't work for the, the money, I, but I am paid, you know, and I do my thing. Um, obviously we have members in our band that only do this and, but we do well, you know, but like we're not at a stage where I would say, you know, this is it. This is all we do. You know, this is, you know, bury tomorrow. There's things that we want to achieve in our lifetime, you know, and there's things that we, we expect to achieve. Um, and that's solely because we've been a band for as long as we have. We're very, very, for a band that's so committed to their fans and so committed to um, ethical and moral obligations that we've set upon ourselves, we are also a very business-minded band in that we, because we have to be, you know, we're 30 plus years old. Like I want this to be a sustainable thing and not have to exploit our fans. So arguably we have to be more business-minded because I'm not going to sit there and go, you're going to, I'm going to pay 50 pounds to come and say hello to me. Like it's not, you know, and I won't go into meet and greets. We'll be there forever. But, um, yeah, it makes it, I mean, but you've got to be business minded these days. I think, I think all the best bands, who, bands like you say, with longer careers who actually do mm. think about these things, a good message really to send out to a lot of younger groups that, yeah, you do actually have to have a business head yeah. on your shoulders these days. But also be, but also be sensible, you know, like enjoy it, enjoy it 
and enjoy it because if it doesn't if you're not if you're looking too much about a paycheck then you're definitely not in the right place because you won't then have longevity you have to have this perfect medium between absolutely loving playing live music um and you know, or recording music or whatever you know artists they do um to also being business minded to successfully be able to do that so the business minded is the is the vehicle is the vessel for you to be able to do something so passionate um and that's you know and for me that's what i've also done in the nhs you know i've aligned myself and my career you know i've done the shit jobs i've done the graft you know i've worked like probably 12 years in the nhs now you know and this whole time i've been doing the graft doing the graft and then i've finally got to a position where i can do what i want to do which is support people mentally and physically um and it's the same thing you know weirdly in a juxtaposition world like i'm at a stage where both of my lives are exactly entwined with what i'm trying to do you know yeah it's mad how those things work out isn't it really it's 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 mm. incredible and congrats again honestly i mean this this record it's it sounds like from what I've heard so far, like it, it's very, very personal to you, and I, I respect you and appreciate you for actually being able to put that out there on the paper because it really does it makes sense, and I think will connect with a lot of people and a lot of fans, uh, mm -hmm. particularly at a crazy time like we are currently, currently in. Uh, and speaking of which, when we get out the other side of this, some things to look forward to. That's what I keep focusing yeah. on by wrapping these up. Tour dates coming. That's very exciting. We're going to play as many shows as we possibly can, you know, towards the latter part of the year, you know, and. Um, it gets difficult because you know when we start thinking about what COVID means to people like this isn't a short sprint as everyone keeps saying this is a marathon and we're going to be going through this for the next year or so um certainly from a recovery period and then you know obviously understanding you know the progression of the virus and all that kind of stuff like this isn't something that we because people need to just be preparing themselves for that um there will be a bit of disappointment here and there and that sucks and you know there's no more no more people that are more disappointed than missing shows and albums being pushed back than us you know but we did it properly and we've done it um from a considered level and the reasons why we were probably a little bit delayed in our announcements is we were desperately trying to figure out ways that we could sort it out and um, but you know our, our point of view is that i want everyone equitably to be able to get our album whether it's from a physical perspective or a digital perspective and if people have spent money um on us on a show or on our record we owe it to them to be able to get them that wherever that may be in time you know time is a long long thing you know we can keep doing it there's gonna be lots of people in isolation being able to listen to our song before so are we all right? Oh, that's true, actually. Yeah, this is going to be everyone's going to know the album inside out, back to front. I'm that's interested, that's though, man. I'm really, I'm really keen to see like when we release like our next few videos and stuff to see like where the views go up because people are at home. Like, it's a that's the analyst in my brain kind of going like, is there a correlation here to like videos like views going up where people are doing it, but or they're so disenfranchised that they're just playing board games and they're going back to like proper like victorian times yeah we're going um, old school forms of entertainment more and more just down the road yeah exactly yeah playing stickball outside in the garden yeah, that it. kind of thing <laughs> um man it's always a pleasure to chat to you and uh, yeah best of luck with everything you're doing and to all your colleagues and all that stuff and Thank we will you, hopefully as i've been saying everyone hopefully get to do this face to face sooner rather than later i really hope so no worries bro thank nice. you so much for it. i really appreciate it now nah, good to chat to you man all right danny everybody